to uh, stop illegal logging. But the question is, why, why aren't those instruments being utilized? Why do even uh, laws around the exportation of, uh, of, of timber logs from developing countries going to the north? Uh, and uh, so we, we feel that uh, there are other you know, mechanisms that are established to address the drivers of illegal logging. And if we look at right now the way that RED is being implemented right now, uh, it's resulting in land grabs. Many of the people do not know, for example, in Kenya, the Singwa tribal peoples of Kenya have been forcibly removed from their communities because these red initiatives are protected reserves, forest reserves, because the bottom line is that is the polluting companies through their legal attorneys that have actually become the owners of these tracts because these forested areas are now used for uh, carbon credits that allow polluters in the north to continue to pollute. So that's what we're concerned is that the, the safeguards that they say are established to prevent land grabs and human rights violations of both indigenous peoples and forest dependent communities. The question is how are they going to be enforced and complied with? Especially when the governments have a long history of violating human rights. In the Congo, for an example, the pygmies. Who's going to protect the rights of the pygmy on these red projects? That's the big question that has not been asked. So how would you like to have a red plus project There is no way to make the red project better. It cannot be fixed. It's not a solution. It involves a climate uh, a market regime that has been part of a big capitalist market system that has never protected frontline communities, uh, uh, indigenous peoples, fisher peoples, and uh, that's why we have to look for other alternatives to protect the trees, but not in these market systems that just allow more dumping of pollution in the north. So surely it's better than nothing. We cannot accept anything that's better than nothing. We cannot accept, it's not ethical to, you know, to say that, well, we can make it better. Let's support it. We saw that excuse happen many years ago in Kyoto, in the Kyoto Protocol. NGOs stood with indigenous peoples back then. We resisted bringing in the clean development mechanism. Now look at the CDMs now. There's a lot of human rights violations with the implementation of clean development mechanisms. Uh, so we, they said, the NGO said, well, trust us, you know, we have no option, let's go with it, we can make it better, we can fix it and protect it. No, we have now uh, CDMs that are being implemented, violating human rights, there's a long history of that. RED now, voluntary RED programs have a long history of violating human rights, and NGOs and the governments are saying, trust us, we're going to have safeguards. No, we're not going to accept that. We're drawing the red line now as indigenous peoples in this big global campaign to build awareness level. Because if we're going to be implementing FPIC, free prior informed consent, these communities have to know the complexity of these market solutions that that are going to violate the human rights. A lot of them now are saying no, they don't want red. So we're going to the nation level, the subnational level, giving the people information that they need. Yes, uh, please excuse me. I'm going to dig out a document here for you. This is one of the documents. I am a new board member of the World Rainforest Movement. It uh, has representation of uh, communities from the, who are dependent on the forests of the Global South, including indigenous peoples. And this uh, uh, publication report is a gallery of conflicts, contradictions, and lies of red. This needs to be available to all the press to read this as well, foot, footnoted and documentation of all the RED projects that have been implemented violating human rights. Here in France, for an example, many of the citizens of France do not, do not know 
that there's a red project that Air France is involved with that's violating the human rights of people in Madagascar. WWF, one of the largest NGOs that says that it is there to protect nature and the environment. No, they are participating in this that allows not only the human rights of the people in Madagascar, the local community to be violated, but also it's a false solution because it allows continuation of the dumping of to toxic greenhouse gases. How do we know the mathematics that pe if people donate money to some kind of carbon broker out there that's part of a carbon neutral system, and actually that $15, $20 or whatever you donate to offset your trip actually is going to go towards uh, uh, diminishing greenhouse gases in the environment. I don't know. We're very cautious of these Ponzi schemes that are out there. Who's checking the numbers? Do you accept that the people who came up with RED and the negotiators here are acting in good faith? I think there are many people that want to do finding solutions. But I think there's many of the NGOs that we talk to don't understand what RED is. And there's many people that uh, in the governments that don't understand where it is. But why is it moving forward with the assumption that there's been it's been vetted by the highest level of economists, the highest level of people involved from community all the way up to government? And no, it hasn't. There's a lot of people. If you tell ask people what is red, a lot of people don't know. I think there are definitely organizations that know what it is. And it, it, our, I think civil society is being manipulated once again. You know, we assume that the market system is, has transparency, but no. Look at the movement of Occupy the 1% and 99% and in our country to where we have financial systems that are not accountable, whereas the people on the streets that get manipulated and exploited. As indigenous people, we're saying enough is enough. We're not going to get exploited anymore. Thank you. I have to go. Thank you.